I am delighted to join you at your conference on energy transitions and sustainable development, what path for our societies. It is such a crucial issue today and I am and, and I do believe that we have to find an answer to move ahead. It is no small, it is absolutely clear today that we are facing an existential threat to the planet and to the life as we know it today. Uh, but the question is still that what we are doing is too little too late. And this is really where we need to discuss what is happening, the good news and the challenges in terms of moving ahead. And that's what I would like to discuss uh, with you today. Firstly, I do believe that the world is recognizing that climate change is here, that the threat is real and the need to act is urgent. Um, Greta and her comrades, young comrades have definitely put this, the urgency of the issue um, in our face. They are young, they are bold, they are angry and they say it as it is. Something that we uh, had stopped doing for too long. We were, we were censoring out our own words because we were worried um, how we would uh, seem to the rest of our people. So even as activists, as climate activists, as scientists, we have often not been as blunt as we need to be. I think it is very important for us to recognize that the young people have put it in our face today and that is good. The fact is climate change is happening today in our world. It's playing out. And I'll say this to you quite honestly, quite frankly, that even when we, when I went to Rio in the 90s uh, and we discussed the Framework Convention on Climate Change, it was being discussed on the global stage by world leaders. We didn't think that it would happen in our lifetime. It just seemed something that would happen. Scientists were saying it was going to happen. We believed it, we fought against it but it just seemed like something that would happen in the future. But it is happening today in our world and I believe it is happening across the world. In my own country, India, we are seeing it play out in terms of extreme rain events. We are getting a complete change in the way the monsoons uh, uh, happen. And remember, the monsoons are the true finance minister of India. And today, in this last monsoon season, we have seen one uh, over a thousand extreme rain events, which has led to floods and then drought. All this is crippling the lives of the very poor. The poor are the victims of climate change today. They are not responsible for the stock of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, yet they are at the front line today of the impacts. But it is also very clear, and I think that has to be something that we understand, that if the poor are impacted today, the rich will be impacted tomorrow. All the science tells us very clearly that what, they, what science has predicted, what models had said would happen, is happening in our world. And this is only at one degree temperature increase, which means that we have to do more. And this is something that I believe we are still not getting there. We know that in this last year, the, uh, the world has moved to cleaner sources of energy, gas, where methane is still a concern, but yes, gas over coal. We have seen movement somewhat to nuclear, where safety is of course a concern, but we are also seeing a growth of renewables. But if you add it up, it still is like a drop in the ocean. We know that even now coal is the primary source of energy across the world, in many parts of the world, including mine. And this is really where the, the, the challenge comes because even as we have to reduce emissions, 
there are parts of the world which have to increase emissions because they need energy for the poorest in the world. We need energy. Energy is a fundamental right. Now, it is very good to say that countries like India, all of Africa must not make the mistakes of the rest of the world. But what are our options? India already has a 175 gigawatt renewable plan. The Prime Minister of India has now upped it to 450 uh, gigawatt of renewable. But it still means that there is a substantial need for affordable energy in the country. And there are very large numbers of people, including poor women, who today cook their food on biomass, who need energy. And that really is the challenge that we face, which is why you, we have to talk about climate justice as much as we talk about climate action. Because climate action must be deep enough, substantial enough to make place for developing countries, for countries like India, for the poor in the world to actually increase their emissions. This does not mean that India must do what the rest of the world has done. Africa, India provide us the opportunity to do things differently. We can build our grid differently. We can build our buildings differently. We can certainly build our cities differently. We can build our cities today so that we don't choke on the pollution of our vehicles. We can actually plan on massive transformation of, um, of public transport, reduce the numbers of vehicles, therefore reduce the emissions. We can do things differently, but this requires that partnership. The world has to show a determination to reduce emissions substantially. And this is where the tragedy is. And let's start talking about the elephant in the room. Let's look at the United States. The United States in this last few years has actually done, some, done something which is dramatic. It has reduced its coal based power sector and increased uh, by moving towards shale gas, uh, natural gas, which has reduced the intensity of its emissions. Now this could have been a major advantage for the whole world because if the largest polluter in the world, the historically most important polluter of the world actually shows that you could reduce emissions, it puts pressure on the rest of the world to do things differently, substantially. But this is the tragedy. The fact is the US total emissions in 2018 increased by 3.5% CO2 emissions. Why? Because even though they reduced the emissions in the energy sector, they increased them everywhere else. Now, this really is something that we have to talk about. We cannot keep talking about India and China and putting all the pressure on countries like India, particularly to say, you must have a different pathway. We must because it matters to us. We must because we need to do things differently in our own countries. But the fact is the world must recognize that this is a global issue that we must act together and the world is as yet doing too little too late.